What's up, YouTube? Robbie Vapes, back again. And today, you get a sneak peek at my other life. So stay tuned. That is right, YouTube. Today, you have a sneak peek at my other life. In other words, some other channels I've been working on while I've kind of let this one lay dormant. Basically, I have some other channels that I have with ones with my brother, and one is actually my newer channel. One focuses on tarantulas, the other one focuses on snakes. Make sure to go check them out. I will have links in the description below as well as in some of these cards up here. So you guys can go click right through it. And basically today's video is obviously not vaping related. It is to do with those other channels. I want to give you guys a little bit of a sneak peek, if you will, just into what to expect on those channels, especially the Tarantula channel, which I'm very active on. I am currently posting three videos a week, Mondays, Wednesdays, and Fridays. So go check it out if you guys want to stay up to date with me on there. Now, without further ado, thanks to the title of the video, let's get into the collection. All right, so we're gonna kick things off with our tarantula bookshelf, beginning with the top portion of it. Up here, we just have a bunch of tanks, and some of them are full of substrate and decorated. They don't have anything in them up here yet, so this is all empty cages or decorated, but empty cages as well. And that's just for some future additions, or if slings start to grow really fast, I have some cages already pre-made, so I'm prepared for that in the future. There's also some decorations up there, some supplies, paintbrushes, tweezers, all that good stuff, but that shelf is kind of boring. Let's move on to the exciting shelf. These are mostly juveniles. So over here, we have the Gramostola Pulcropies, which you may have seen the feeding video on. If you haven't, make sure to go check that out. That is a really fun video. I had a lot of fun making it. Hopefully you guys had a lot of fun watching it, but that guy right there is absolutely amazing. And I shouldn't say guy, because it actually is a confirmed female. But yeah, hopefully you guys enjoyed that video. And that is the Gramostola Pulcropies. Moving on, we have the Formictopus Cancerides, uh, or Paladin. He has his own little kind of castle there. And this was actually a beta tank that was converted into a tarantula cage, much like I've done in the past. There's some air holes along the side there for ventilation, cross ventilation, and there's some air flow on the top as well. Next up, we have the Pacillotheria Metallica. This is of course a small sling. This is only about three quarters of an inch but this was part of my converting a beta tank to tarantula enclosure video I did before. So if you guys didn't see that, make sure you go check that one out. Kind of self-promoting here, can you really blame me? But hopefully you guys enjoyed it. And uh, moving on from there, of course, we have the Tapenocheneus Violace uh, Violaceus, which is, again, one of my favorite little teas. This is only about a half inch, super quick, not very aggressive, more so just skittish but great personality on that one, love the webbing, love what it's done with that enclosure, and same thing, we have the top ventilation, uh, and then we also have the uh, blocked off lid there as well. Uh, finally on this shelf, we have my most recent edition, which you guys may have seen the video for. If you haven't, go check it out, right? All right, this is the Nandu Colorado Velosis. If you didn't see that video, I basically took it from the pet store. It was in this tiny little uh, cricket keeper thing and I decided to make it a real nice home. So I did some fake plants, nice big water dish, and of course a hide made out of cork bark and some sphagnum moss as well. But that's pretty much it on this shelf. Let's take you down a little lower and let's check out the sling shelf. All right, so we're a little bit lower on this one. This is the sling shelf. These are all my spiderlings here. Uh, as you can see, I got a bunch of stuff here. This section from Staples got this for 50 bucks. Uh, you may have seen it in my rehousing video or you may not have. Uh, there are some gaps in this shelf. That's because I've been trying to experiment with different creations on the enclosures. But let's get started with the long list. Uh, starting off on the top left here, we have the Brachypoma Bomai. This was a half inch sling and I got it uh, maybe about a month and a half, two months ago. Uh, moving on, we have the Heteropo Heteropoda Havana. That's the stony huntsman spider that I got in that mystery box. In fact, most of these are from the mystery box here. Uh, a few of them aren't, but we'll get to those ones when we do. Uh, next up, we have the Brachypalmo albopelosum. This is the, let's double check this. This is the Nicaraguan form. So we have that one next. Next to it is a Brachypalmo albopelosum hobby form. Down below here on, on the left-hand side, our first one on the second row is our Orphanacus philippinus. Beside that one, we have got Eupalestreus Weisenbergi. 
And beside that one, we have our Katamiri Parvum. And this is actually one of my bigger slings here. I think it was close to an inch. So that one's grown really nicely. And uh, we'll probably have to rehouse that one pretty soon. Next up, we have the Afonopelma Iodius. This is actually one of my favorite little teas. He's got tons of personality. He's about three quarters of an inch now. And uh, pretty docile as well. But uh, of course, he is pretty small. So we'll see if that continues on into adulthood. Uh, moving on, we have our Heteroscodra Maculata. He has done an excellent job of wrapping up his little cage here. And pretty much only see him when he's eating. So don't expect much from that one. And then lastly in this shelf, we have our Formictopus Cancerides number two. Again, this is one we're hoping for a female on. And it's about a half inch sling or a male. I, I just hope for an opposite sex and paladin, obviously. So that's what I'm hoping for. I do have two other enclosures down here that are pre-made, but there is nothing in them. Again, for the same logic as a top shelf, those enclosures are really just being made in order to uh, attempt for future additions or changing out uh, enclosures if I ever have to. Next over here, we have one of our bigger enclosures of that same style. This is our Theraphosa Sturmy that we got from Tarantula Canada. It's a one inch sling, although now it's probably close to an inch and a half almost with that real nice DLS diagonal leg span. And uh, probably have to add some water in there pretty soon, but we'll, uh, we'll get that topped up for them. Uh, in this vial, this is actually the Heterometris uh, Hesperus, or sorry, not Heterometris, uh, Latrodectus Hesperus. Hesperus, 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 and uh, this is of course the North American Black Widow, and she's just at the top up there, so you may not be able to see her, but I'll try and get some shots of her. And last up is our, I think it was sold as a quarter inch, uh, and this is a Behovis Confucius quarter inch Scorpling. Uh, however, I would say she was closer to a sixteenth of an inch when I got her. She's super tiny. Um, but yeah, she's eating pretty well, so I have no complaints with that. Uh, Pre-killed small one-week-old crickets, and about once a week for those because I don't want to overfeed her. Moving on next to her, we actually have our bigger Vehovis Confucius, an inch and a half inch Scorpling. Uh, a little bit bigger, a little more aggressive, definitely more skittish, but more skittish, more aggressive, more fun. Um, next to her are two Heterometris Spinifers and... Again, they're kind of mostly burrowers, so I don't want to disturb them too much, but I'll try and get a shot of at least one of them so you guys can see what they look like. And they're about an inch or so, give or take. Other than that, uh, if we move lower, which you can't really see, I have some tanks set up as well, again, for in preparation. I also have this cricket tank set up, which is a total mess. Um, they just didn't keep well in there. I feel awful. It's more of a cricket graveyard now. But... Lesson learned. And then at the very bottom, we have some more empty tanks and some extra decorations uh, as well. So that is the tarantula bookshelf. Let's move on to some other stuff. All right, so next in line is Beans. This is my Savannah Monder. He is a little bit skittish, but he's usually pretty good once you get him out of the cage. His cage is a two by two by one PVC enclosure with a cutout opening on the top for the heat lamp to come in. Uh, I'm debating on doing one of two things with him next, and that will be either putting him into a 4x2x1 by by enclosure, which is what my snakes are in. Spoiler alert, we have some snakes coming up here soon. Uh, and just doing like a radiant heat panel on the top. Or, the other option is going straight to a custom enclosure for him, and letting him uh, kind of just grow into it. So one of two things, that's going to be coming in the next couple months, I'll figure that out when I get to it. But until then, uh, he's just in this 2x2x1, two by two by and he seems to be enjoying it. So. Let's get them back in. There you go, beans. All right, we're gonna close it up. Watch your toes. There you go, buddy. And we'll move on. All right, as we move one level down here, we can see we have my first boa. Uh, I'm not gonna tell you what she is. It is a her, she is roughly eight years old. She was bred once, uh, just over two years ago. So she had two years off, um, or I guess three years ago she was bred. She had two years off, she will be breeding for me this year, and she'll be breeding to one of my males, which I'll show you later on in the video. But the reason I don't want to say anything is because I actually think that the pairing could be a world's first, or at least a Canadian first. And I don't want to spoil what she is just yet, because I think the project's going to be very exciting. Now, of course, if you do want to follow that project, you can check it out on my other YouTube channel, Really Constrictors, with my brother. 
but if you don't, you don't have to, but here she is, Big Mama, and she is a beauty. All right, so as we move one enclosure down, we can see we have the next snake. This is another boa. This is my White Pearl Motley. For those of you guys who don't know, the White Pearl is considered to be a pastel gene or a pastel aesthetic looking thing. Um, a lot of people speculate it's not a true gene that in the sense that it won't get passed on to the offspring, but there's been proof recently that there actually could be a gene to this, uh, to this coloration. We don't know for sure. There has been a White Pearl to White Pearl pairing and it did produce a super White Pearl. However, uh, none of the babies have survived and unfortunately still a bit of a mystery to see if there's anything viable there or if it's just more of a um, look sort of thing as opposed to a actual gene that can be passed on. But that's my white pearl motley and uh, she'll probably be off this year so nothing too crazy with her but uh, she hasn't bred yet and she's about seven years old almost now. All right, so last up, this is my carpet python hand food. He is named, and uh, you can kind of just see him there. He might strike the camera, so just be careful. He has the name hand food for a reason. And in fact, he actually bit me earlier today while I was trying to clean his enclosure out, so uh, that was fun. But I'll show a quick video of that. Um, it didn't hurt a ton. It actually could have been a lot worse. Well, actually, it could have been a lot worse. I mean, let's be honest, it, it got me, it wrapped me, and um yeah i mean it just kind of is what it is it happens but i got over it and uh, it's honestly not very painful it's just kind of annoying more so than anything else but yeah you got me so next up are some of my smaller snakes they're all in tubs for the moment now i do have some extra pvc enclosures for them and they do get bigger but in the meantime they're just in here and let's check out the top one all right, so at the very top, we're gonna check this guy out first. This is Satan. He is a little bit more aggressive than hand food. He is actually a triple het. Uh, he's het, which means he carries three different genes but doesn't actually display any of them. And so let's see if we can get him out here. He's of course at the very back, which is going to be super fun. Let's try to get bit on camera. All right, buddy. Show yourself for the camera. All right, so the three genes he carries, he carries the blood gene, the type two anery gene, and the sharp albino gene. You can see he's already ready to eat me. That is pretty normal for him. So really nice colorations. I actually think the blood gene, despite being considered a heterozygous, heterozygous gene, is actually somewhat displayable and you can kind of see, but I'll let you decide. I think it looks a little more reddish pinkish because of it, but maybe I'm wrong. Maybe I'm just imagining things and maybe he just looks normal to most people. Might have a bias here because he's my snake. We're gonna move him out of the way. Hopefully he doesn't try and bite me. Put his hide back. We'll put him back. And head down, buddy, head down. Watch your head. All right, thank you. Uh, moving on below him, we actually have my Annery Motley. She is much gentler. Of course, I say that I'm probably gonna get bit by her. But with her, super sweetheart, as you can see, she's trying to run away. And that's a quick little glimpse of her. Beautiful pattern. Annery Motley again, beautiful snake. Um, nothing to complain about. She's still pretty young though. She's only about, I think she's about a year and a half now. Oh, don't go in there. All right, I'm just gonna use my hands for her. She'll be okay. Again, you're going in the wrong place. There you go. All right, we gotcha. All right, second last snake here. This is actually the first snake I got when I got back into boas. Uh, she is a female paraglow. For those of you guys who don't know what a paraglow is, it is basically a cross between bull woman caramel and uh, sharp albino, which creates kind of this mixture of albino and caramel, caramel albino. That looks absolutely stunning, if you ask me. And let's see if I can get her out of here. Just to show her off. She's actually a sweetheart. She's 
really good. Never been bitten by her. Um, but yeah, she's getting pretty big, so she'll get a new cage here soon as well. And yeah, that's her coloration. Beautiful snake and beautiful attitude. All right, so last but not least, on the very bottom is my most expensive snake by far. Uh, this guy was almost $3,000. And as you can see, $3,000 gets you a water snake because he's already tipped his water over. Okay, this hook is pretty much useless. Let's just take the hide out. All right, this is my boy that will be breeding this year to the big mama. And this is not gonna be a secret what he is. As he already made a mess, I'm gonna have to clean him again. I literally just cleaned him today and now I'm gonna have to clean him out again. So in here, over here, this is actually my fire male. And for those of you guys who don't know, a fire male is actually a het for leucistic boa. So that's my fire male. That's again, most expensive snake in my collection. Uh, he is actually really gentle. He's super nice, great attitude. Um, as soon as this video is actually done recording, I'm gonna have to clean him out because he has made a massive mess. But we'll put him back for now and get that sorted out later on. So that's all my snakes. And let's move on to my last reptile. And then we'll wrap the video up. Finally, we get to the last reptile here. This is my Crest Gecko in a bioactive vivarium. There are live plants, there's a couple of bromeliads, there's some tall plant here, which I cannot remember what it's called, and then a small little fern-like plant, which again, I can't remember what that one's called either. Uh, some leaf litter on the ground as well. And you'll notice there are two water dishes in there, or two food dishes in there. There's two different types of food in there because I like to offer options. And uh, there she is in the background there. Her name is Dot. She's a super Dalmatian Crest Gecko. Now, if you guys want to guess why her name is Dot, then I have left a hint in this video previously. Make sure to kind of let me know in the comments what you think the reason is. But continuing on here, we do have some springtails and some isopods underneath the cork bark. Uh, just again, to add to that live bioactive vivarium feel. And of course, we do have some lighting up top here too. I actually have two different types of lights. The front one is actually a uh, mass spec or something like that, one for coral. It's not on very often. The back one is of course made for plants and just to help them grow. And then we also have the mister here in the corner as well. And just to help make sure everything stays moist and that we have full coverage of water. That's gonna wrap up our collection tour. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, make sure to leave a like down below. If you didn't, make sure to leave a dislike and also let me know in the comments if you have any feedback or criticisms. Otherwise, I appreciate it nonetheless. And I do like reading your comments and I wanna make sure that I get back to all of you. So that's gonna end it for today. Thank you all so much for watching and I will see you in the next one.